Hi, my name is Hiroto Aoki. I'm a master's student at the University of Tokyo. Today, I'm going to talk about a project named Extra Mission. Extra Mission is a virtual environment display system that uses a laser pico projector as a head mounted projector and retro reflective material. It has features of long visibility range and bright imaging and two parallaxes for depth perception. So first of all, let me talk about the motivation behind this project. Using virtual environment system like CAVE is sometimes better than using head-mounted display for some applications like communicating and gaming. Using head-mounted using head -mounted display, users' face will be covered with it and only light from display can be seen. On the other hand, in an immersive, immersive display like CAVE, users can see their real body, other users, and real objects, which makes interaction more natural and intuitive. However, CAVE has several problems. One is about visual consistency. CAVE can show images with visual consistency consistency just for one user, which means that other users will see distorted images. Another issue about CAVE is its scalability. CAVE uses multiple projectors to project visual environment on the walls. This makes it difficult to set up and scale the system. To solve these problems, a combination of virtual reflector and head-mounted projectors have been used. One major, uh, however, other issues arise from this configuration. One major issue is that is the lack of brightness. Since these projects use small LCD projectors or arrange light source and eyes in optically unsymmetric positions, the brightness of the images are not enough. This requires environment light to be dimmed and small distance between users and projection plane, which makes a limit in size of the system. So we try to see how this can be improved when we change the projector and optical configuration. And we found that using laser pico projectors and prism type retro reflector, projected image can be seen clearly 10 meters away from the projection plane without dimming the environment light. So now I'll talk about the components of the system. These are the components of the built sy our system. We use laser pico projector instead of, instead of LCD projectors for head-mounted dis projected display. Using head-mounted projector in conjunction with high-accuracy retro reflector, retinal, retinal scanning display can be built. To provide each user with visual consistency, we use head tracking camera. Before I talk about implementation, let me explain the technology behind, especially about retinal scanning display and retro reflective. So first, I will explain about retinal scanning display. Retinal scanning display is a display that shows images by scanning laser beams on the retina. It has a great feature that it shows bright images without, with low luminance of the light source. To build, to build retinal scanning display, laser projector and scanning mirror are needed. Unfortunately, the price of laser pico projector which have both of them, is getting cheaper and cheaper recently. So we use them. To make projected image shown clearly, scanned laser beam must pass through the center of the pupil. We usually use lens and mirror, or just a curved mirror to make this realized. But in this project, we use retro reflector instead of mirrors. A retro reflector is a material that reflects light back in the incident direction. There are two types of it, bead type and prism types. 
Although prism type re reflector has smaller observation angle, it has higher re reflectivity, which makes reflected image brighter. So we choose to use the prism type re reflector for the projection plane. And I'll talk about the uh, implementation. This is the head mounted projector. It loads two laser pickup projectors and half mirrors for both left and right eyes. We place the projector and mirrors where the eyes and light source will be arranged symmetric, symmetrically with respect to the half mirrors. This is very important because if not, projected image will never be shown to the user. We also put tracking markers for head tracking. And these are samples of retroreflective walls and objects. As I talked, we use high-accuracy high prism-type retroreflective material. On the ceiling of the projection walls, we place several tracking cameras. With all combined, this is how the projected image looks from the camera. Although the view, views from camera and a raw eye are different, this image shows a vivid color and great brightness. And this image is taken under room light set to 300 lux, which is normal brightness for the living room. And this place is about 40 lux, by the way. And image Images can be projected on round surface. The left image shows a cylinder coated with retroreflective material. In right image, wood texture was projected on cylindrical object. You can see the image is projected like, uh, like on a flat surface. As extramation is a virtual environment system, display system, I will mention about two parallaxes that Extramission has. Individually projected image, images for each eye create stereoscopic vision and provide binocular parallax. And rendered images based on the user's head position and rotation use, using head tracking provide movement parallax. These two parallaxes helps the users to perceive depth information. Now let me talk about the evaluation of the build system. We checked how the features of the system works in real use, which are does it have capability of multi-user experience and does it show images with binocular parallaxes and how long user can move away from the projection plane. And first, we checked how the projected image looks from other viewpoints. We placed an implemented head-mounted projector three meters away from the retroreflective wall and take images with a camera placed at each point of the grid with the interval of 50 centimeter under condition of 130 lux room light. <coughs> and these are the images that taken from each viewpoints. And we found that the diffused light can be seen from vertically aligned viewpoints. However, no projected light could be seen from other viewpoints, which means that image overlaps between users are unnoticeable. <coughs> and next, we tr uh, try to see how the overlaps overlaps between images for left and right eye look like. We place the head-mounted projector in front of the projection plane and gradually move, move it away from the wall. And we took pictures of the projected image from, the, from both viewpoints for left and right eye at each distance. In this setup, we assume that interpupillary distance is six centimeter and we only projected image from the left projector to make overlaps stand out. <clears throat> and these are how the overlaps look like. 
First, uh, we found that without any brightness control, slight overlaps was seen from the camera. But in this case, the light from the projector was too strong, even for human eye. So we placed a neutral density filter near the light source. When it was placed, overlaps could be unnoticeable. In this case, we used MD8 filter. And this gave us, this, this gave us an idea that brightness should be adjusted depending on distance from the projection plane and the environment light. So we listed this in the future work list. <laughs> Lastly, we try to see how the projected image will be viewed from different distances. In this evaluation, we set the illuminance of the room to 30, 300 lux, and th starting from three meters away from the projection plane, we gradually move it away from the plane. And we took pictures of the projected image at each distance. And these are how it, how they look, how they looks. Of course, as the distance get longer, images will be, will get darker. But images was seen more than 10 meters, 10 meters away from the plane under 300 lux environment light. And I'll talk about the limitation of the system. So first, the eye box of the display is very small. In extra mission, when the eye looks direction other than the front, images will be disappear from the view since the laser light will not pass through the pupil. So users must always look forward. And the second limitation is about field of, field, field of view. Using head-mounted projector, FOV is limited to project, projecting angle. To enlarge the FOV, we need, to, we, need, we need an optical element like a fish eye lens to widen the projecting angle. Of course, it requires distortion, distortion correction. The third is about observation angle of the virtual reflective material. Since there is a limit in the incident angle that can reflect light back in the direction of the light source, the quality of the projected image on the edge of rounded surface will be low, and sometimes images will not project it. And lastly, even when we choose high accuracy retro reflector, there is no 100% retro reflective material. So diffuse light will be visible slightly. And the more distance the user take from the projection plane, the more diffusing light the user sees. So when the user take distance like 10 meters away from the wall, Diffusing light creates image, image overlaps between left and right eye, which breaks the stere stereoscopic imaging. And so last, I will talk about future works. So for the future works, we listed two things. First one is brightness control. As in the evaluation two, fixed brightness makes the projected image too bright for human eye, and diffuse lights light stand out, which will kill stereoscopic imaging. So we needed to control the brightness depending on environment light and distance from the projection plane. And second, second one, second one is the method of head tracking. We use tracking camera for head tracking, but this makes it hard to scale the system since large system requires more tracking camera. To solve this problem, we think that inside out tracking from the head mounted projector using camera or IR sensor will work. And these are summary. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, I'm curious if you've seen the uh, Tilt 5 uh, headsets, the recent tabletop gaming headsets. Uh, yeah, I know it. I'm, I'm wondering uh, how that device compares to, to this one, because I know they both use retroreflective materials. So um, the Tilt is just a tabletop application. Mm-hmm. Like, so... Um, This project is um, aiming for like virtual environment system. Like, like um, it's it. Uh, so the wall is the main projection plane. So I think gotcha. it's the, yeah. Projector is very easy because you can just uh, place half mirror and projector, two projectors in the right position, and the hard thing is ah uh, yes, very sensitive. So you have to like adjust the angle. Thank you. 